Good evening, everyone. It's getting close to 6 o'clock here in Pineville. And Mark said he wanted to do a Bible study tonight on the 6th chapter of Hebrews. And so we're going to endeavor to go through the 6th chapter of Hebrews. I'm going to make a few comments about it. And then I'm going to have Mark read through the entire chapter for us. Um, I've commented before that the whole book of Hebrews is one of my favorite books in the Bible because it has to do with pointing to Christ and his perfect sacrifice. And we cannot get too much of that today with all of the um, conditional salvation people out there. If you do this, if you do that, if you'll do this. And all of the Zionists are teaching two and three different ways of salvation. And... And there's also a group of people that say you have to have a second definite work of grace and sanctification. There's another group that say you have to be baptized and speak in other tongues. Or if you don't do that, you don't have salvation. There are other people that teach that you have to drum up your own faith by your works by praying more, by fasting. Then you have the Roman Catholic Church that say you have to say the rosary. And you have to go to Mass. You have to um, pray to Mary. You have to pray to dead saints. So, But now they're all coming together under one umbrella even welcoming in the Muslims <laughs> and the pagans. And they say that all paths lead to God. And Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's no more exclusive gospel than the gospel that Jesus Christ himself taught. And Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. So this chapter starts off saying that he's leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ and going on to perfection, lay us again to, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrines of baptism, of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal punishment. And one of the favorite scriptures in the whole Bible, in fact, a guy, a Ph.D., that teaches theology, had a debate with me over the Internet, or actually through our emails, over this fourth verse. This is his proof that people can uh, lose their salvation. Verse 4, it says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to remove them again under repentance, seeing they crucified themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Well, he said, well, how can, you know, he was saying, because of my teaching on eternal life, and it's not temporary, and that Christ taught that no man can pluck them out of my hand, and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. How is this when the Apostle Paul says it's impossible um, if they were once enlightened, and having tasted the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of all of those, and tasted the good word of God, and so on if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance well 
there's only one possible answer to this. This is what I told the, uh, this guy. I went to school with him, went to Bible school with him, and then he ended up getting a Ph.D. in theology. I said, there's only one answer to that. Those people have to be reprobates. Okay, they may have tasted of some heavenly gift. They have, may have been partakers of the Holy Ghost, but they must have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. There's only one answer. They have to be reprobates. You know why? Because the Bible says, that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And no man can pluck them out of my hand. You know why? Because in Jude it says that God keeps us from all falling and presents us spotless. You know why? Because we're told in Romans 8, 28 through 39, for those whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, and those whom he predestinated, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. So these people that he's speaking of here they were not recipients of any of those things. They were not foreknown, they were not predestinated, they were not called, they were not justified, and they were not glorified. And how does he go on in this chapter? Verse 9, he says, But beloved, we're persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation. Now, that's a different story, isn't it? Things that accompany salvation. Company that a, a, a company salvation is a total different uh, scenario, and he says that we desire that you show diligence to the full assurance of hope and being. You're not supposed to go around doubting your salvation. You should have full assurance of your salvation. And he said, we should not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. What did he tell Abraham? He told Abraham, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so afterward, he had patiently endured. He obtained the promise. The only, only way he could endure patiently if he was given the grace of God to do so. In the 17th verse it says that for in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, there we go, the heirs of promise are not vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. The heirs of promise are vessels of honor fitted for glory. And he says, here in 17, we're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability. That means that this counsel cannot be changed. If he decreed that you will be born again, if he decreed that you will be predestinated unto adoption, if he decreed that he would call you with an effectual calling, then it's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. But we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Strong consolation. That's what I told this fellow. He was arguing with me. I says, you don't sound like you have strong faith in the immutability of, uh, of God and his decrees that he's laid out for all of his elect. I said, this, this ends with a stronger resolution of God's elect than you're putting doubts in people's minds by using that scripture back there. Because it says here, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. That means that it's unwavering. 
unwavering. Jesus was made a high priest for us forever after the order of Melchizedek. That means that Jesus Christ has an eternal priesthood. That means that if you're one of God's elect, he's your priest, he's your high priest, and he has made intercession for you. He's paid the penalty for your sins on the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary by his precious blood. He's rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for you. Who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. So anyway, this is really good. Even though the Armenians have a heyday with this, especially that one verse, you know, it's impossible for those who want once enlightened. That's right. That's right. If they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. But let me tell you something. It takes more than just being enlightening. It takes salvation. That's what we're seeing here. It takes salvation. It's, it takes being born again by the Spirit of God. Not just being enlightened. Not just tasting something. It takes the decree of God that would, we would be predestinated unto adoption. So I'm going to turn this over to Mark and have him read this um, and then we'll go from there. Therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, Doctrines of baptisms and the laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Just what we do, if God permit, it is impossible for those who once enlightened have tasted of the heavenly gift or made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Taste the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. They shall fall away to renew them. Again, in repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God, afresh. It's an open shame, the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it. Bringeth four herbs meet for them by whom his rest receive blessing from God. That which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and nigh of the cursing is ended to be burned. The beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. So we thus speak. God is not righteous to get your work and labor of love that you showed toward his name and that you minister to the saints and do minister. We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the assurance spoken to the end. That you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself. Saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee and multiply and I will multiply thee. So after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater an oath of confirmation of them and of all and of all strife. Wherefore God will be more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise and mutability. Council confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, he might have a strong consolation and have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have an anchor of the soul, most sure and steadfast, which entered to that within the veil. Whether he was a forerunner or as for us, entered that even Jesus made a high priest for him. Ever asked the order in Melchizedek. Thank you, Mark. Well, I'm glad that we have an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. I'm glad that God confirmed this by an oath. 
and I'm glad that it's impossible for God to lie. That we have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. May the good Lord be with you today is my prayer. God bless. Here,